Okay guys, so what I need you to do now is again, open up, make sure you have this zip package open. And the only files we're gonna be looking at now, you can ignore kind of these two, and the spec document we'll look at from time to time, but the tutorial one, um, notice first off, this is wrong. And I used a, a former student you know, file and it was a good sample, but um, we know that the index should be actually root, right? So let's just change working to root just because it's more typical of what we've been working with all semester long. So I'm just gonna go change the working file to root since that's what it should be. This is typically working. So I don't really care because it's only a PSD folder. So if we wanna change that to working for all the you know graphics and stuff like that, that's fine. You do not need a PSD. So this person went all the way and created a four page uh, Photoshop file. But again, you can always just kind of plan out to do a background and all you need is placing assets over top of it. So you don't need to do a full comp. Obviously there's nothing wrong going above and beyond like this, but I'm not even gonna be looking at the comp. So just do what you need to do to get the layout that you want and then develop it. So I'm gonna open up index and style. So I'm gonna do that in brackets or Dreamweaver or your favorite text editor. And normally I just get you guys to do this one and then I would type in or get you guys to type in a lot of the HTML code, right? But I don't want to kind of waste your time with that at the moment. So I'm gonna go and make sure that you have both of them open. So we have the index and the style sheet right there, but I'm gonna open up the completed version also. And instead of getting you to type in by hand, I'm gonna go and have you copy and paste from the finish. But before we do that, I just want you to get familiar with this file here. Okay, so what do we have? I'm gonna open it up, both the completed version and the actual in progress version we have open now. So if I double click that, you're gonna see that this is currently what we have. Um, RF navigation, remember, it has to be a unique icon or a unique text, not just repeated like this, but you need a nav somewhere on the home page that will re uh, that will stay on every page. Um, there are some exceptions. If you don't want to keep it on every single page, you don't have to. Most people do, but I think there were a couple sections here. Oh, uh, no, this person fixed it up top too. Yeah, so if you do keep it on every page, that would be ideal. Um, all right, so that's about all you have right there. And the location of that is here. So as you open up the body tag, you have LIs in a UL, and it's just these images. So you need a unique one. It has an A tag. Um, it could be text, right? You could be doing like home page instead of the actual images. And remember, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be UL and LIs. It can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a vertical nav. It can be a horizontal nav. It doesn't have to be on the right side. It can be on the left side or the top. I showed you a wealth of examples of all the ways that people approach that all right so as i show you section to section just remember this is how i did it in my sample site what are you going to do to meet the minimum requirements but make it your own as well and don't be surprised if marks get taken off if you're just basically reskinning this guy here all right a lot of marks will be lost if you do that so that's all we have here and then at the very bottom you just have a bunch of scripts that i will be kind of talking about throughout this video series. Most importantly, the bottom one over here. All right, so you'll customize and add the parallax effects just by manipulating this, and it will make sense to you. Um, the ones above it are just basically linking to a jQuery file external, all right? And these ones are all internal files inside of your actual root folder. So if I showed that to you here, you can see that the scripts are located right there. And I'm not gonna look at them, just know that the whole task is basically implementing the knowledge you have with HTML and CSS while utilizing a third party parallax script. And you can use the one I'm providing you, but if you feel like you wanna use a more current one, parallax.js or others like that, you can. Again, you can use the one I'm using, no problem. And you can certainly go and experiment and use other ones out there that may be even more current, more powerful, if you like, okay? As long as you end up with a parallax script, script that meets the minimum requirements of my spec document, I'm happy. So going back into it, that is what the index page looks like. Then the style sheet 
is just simple, okay? So it just basically has a body tag, setting the margin padding to zero. We know the box sizing is so that if we add padding or borders to any a block level element with a width and a height, it will absorb that border and uh, padding and won't increase the width and height of that element. And then this is just some basic kind of styling position fixed for the navigation in itself. All right, so no parallax is happening yet. So that's where we're starting from. Um, what we want to do next is open up the finished version also, since it will speed things up. Now remember, I also want to rename the working here, bit of a mistake, root, and then working like that. So Photoshop's in working, the HTML's in root. We should know that by now. Um, and I'll just simply open an index in the style sheet like this. Open with brackets. All right, so the finish is at the bottom, the in progress is at the top. And I'm just going to get you to copy and paste. Remember, if this was semester one, you'd be typing all this out to learn it. But now we're just going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to tell you what kind of what's happening. So let's go and start with the very first one. So the index where the finished file is, let's go and grab the first screen. So I'm just going to go like this, Command C go into the styles, uh, sort of the index of my tutorial in progress one. And I'm going to paste it right over here. Another video is just finished, so I'm going to close that. Okay, so we have this div. Nothing about parallax is happening yet. There is no parallax happening yet. I simply have an opening div with an ID equals screen one. Remember, this now is an ID selector, which I communicate with a hashtag in CSS. And the reason why I use an ID here, not a class, is because the navigation here uses anchor tags. Remember, if you do a hashtag in front and have a name and then use the ID, then this link will automatically go wherever I have this ID. And this link will go wherever the second ID is once I have it in there, and the third, and the fourth, etc. So simply a div open close with a nested div open close, and the nested one simply has the logo. So let's bring in the CSS of the finished and put it into the tutorial. So screen one, there's only two selectors here: the background and the logo. Command C. If you're still confused, don't worry. Once it starts piecing itself together, it will become clear. And then over here, we can go so far as to do something like, you know, screen one or section one styles if you want to kind of separate them from one another. Paste it. And let's take a closer look. So the first div with this ID, um, excuse me, has a background image and it's centered top center, told it not to repeat itself, and it's fixed to the background. And it has a height of a thousand. All right, so let's take a look at what that actually did. So if I refresh it, we have this background in there now. And why a thousand? Because that's how tall I want it to be. All right, I want it to be a thousand tall. And I have my navigation in here. I messed up that one because I added that home text and didn't get rid of it, but I'll fix that. And this is the actual logo that's in the other div. So looking at the screen one element logo IMG. So any images inside of this div, please move down by 180, move from the left by 150, shrink down to size by 25%. This is simply because the student didn't optimize the size of the image in Photoshop, which is always better because it will get rid of the actual kilobytes that it takes. If you have a massive image and you just use this percentage to size it down, it still has that massive kilobyte that you would otherwise could optimize and get rid of if you export it to the size that you want. But in a pinch, this works as well. So if I didn't have this, all right, so you can see that it is, it actually didn't actually do much. Let's see, uh, it's pretty big. Yeah, there we go, it's sized down. So it's not too much of a difference, but you can see that it just did size down. And obviously you could size it down even farther and you know, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and this is the 180 that's keeping it down. So 180 from the top, if I do something like 380, obviously it's gonna be farther down. 
all right, 580, etc. right? So you can always play around with the values if you're confused by them. Set it back to what it was. And obviously the very last one's 150 over here. So if I increase that, it would move over here, etc. And again, this is just where they wanted their logo. You decide where you want your logo and how you want to position it. But there's nothing parallax going on right now. This is floating over top of the actual background only because the background is set to fixed. And if I get rid of the fixed, remember the logo will simply be going with the background like that. All right, but because the background's fixed to the viewport, it's um, cemented there and the logo is going to be free to kind of float above. It looks parallax, but it's not. Okay, so that is screen number one. You can feel free to add parallax elements to it if you like. Um, but of course, I, the student didn't at the time. And some of those samples I showed you had parallax in the first screen if you wanted it. So let's go to screen two. So we're gonna go, excuse me, into the index and we're gonna grab screen two div here. This is by far you know, the most involved just because that's what the student decided at this time. So go back to the index file and paste inside right after screen one, comment, enter, enter, paste it. And then we have this guy. All right. so. Exactly the same. Screen two is the same as screen one is the same as screen three and four. Okay, so ID screen two background communicates with this link and it has a background very similar to one. Then it has three empty divs for each of the trophies, which are going to have a background image in CSS for the Wimbledon Trophy US Open and the French Open one. And then completely optional is another div with an image inside of it, just like this div with the logo. So this isn't part of the requirement. Again, maybe it's worthwhile bringing up the spec document right now. So if we go over here, all you need for section one is the logo, main nav links and a background. If you want to add parallax and text and stuff, you can. All right, screens two to three need at minimum two moving parallax elements that scroll at different speeds and also have a topic and visually interesting and topic relevant background. So two moving pieces in a background is all you need. Okay, this person had three moving pieces, a background, and then added another non-parallax image in here for good measure. It could be text, it could be another image, but that's bonus. So let's take a look at the style. Screen two, one, two, three, four, five. Selectors were copying by far the most of any section for this particular sample. Going into here, we could again do screen two styles if we wanted to. And then of course, paste what we have instead of typing it out by hand, that would have taken a long time. And again, please note that all the screen backgrounds are the same. Okay, this has a background image, top center, no repeat fixed, height 1000. The only reason overflow hidden was here is we have a height of a thousand. If at any point any of these other images, including the Roger Feder floated to the right image, uh, wanted to go past the thousand height mark, it would hide the overflow. So that just means if anything, any element is tempted based on any uh, property value combos that we've given it to exceed past the height of a thousand pixels, the overflow will be hidden. So it'll be just cropped off really clean and everything will be nice between the thousand. It was just a fail safe for the student, I believe. Okay, so again, background right here. Nice. All right, let's refresh it. Now you can see I have the red background. That's required. All right, then we have a Wimbledon trophy, US Open, and a French trophy right here. One, two, three trophies. They are um, parallax because they're going at different speeds. This one's at the bottom, it catches up to the other one, and it's kind of overlapping, obviously. And this looks like parallax, but it's just simply an image that is going over top, but doesn't increase or decrease its position. It's always in the same position, and it's just simply going over top of the fixed background. So it looks like it's parallax, but it's not. Whereas these guys can go on their, at their own pace. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on with these trophies. So you have a background, each one's identical. If you know how this one works, you know how the other two work. So there's the trophy, no repeat. 
The height is 1,000, so it can operate within the same height structure as the main screen background. Margin top is 50 pixels, so this one just starts out from the very top of the background, 50 pixels down. If I increase that, do, 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 let's see, you know, 350 or something like that, you can see now its starting point is way down there. Same is true for all of them. So this one starts at 50, this one's at 200, and this one's at 300. Play around with it if you're confused, save it, see what happens. Absolute just says, hey, position yourself within this screen. And again, so far we have the height, the margin, the width is 1,000, and the Z index is important because it's layering. So remember, you can use Z index to layer images on top of one another. So with Z index though, it doesn't have to be 200, 201, 202. It just has to be that whatever image you want to be above another has to be a value that's greater than that one. So this could very well be two, this could be three, this could be four, you know, or this could be like, you know, 2000, you know, 5,055 and like 10 million, whatever. It doesn't matter as long as this one's above this one, which is above this one. But obviously, you'd probably want to keep it a little cleaner than that. Okay, so, uh, and then the width I'll get back to. But the width basically is a 1,000 and not more, not less. Because in this particular case, if I were to measure from the very left to Roger Federer, that's about 1,000 there. So it just said, hey, the trophy should kind of operate within this area. There's no point going over top of Roger Federer. That's what the student decided. Of course, he could have if he wanted to. So he just said, 1,000 oh, is pretty good right there. Um, so point is, you decide your values based on whatever graphics you have on your screen. And then the very last one is the player, which again is not actual parallax. And you can see that it's just simply an image in between another div. And it's this picture here. And it's made sure that it's floated to the right with a width of 50%. Looking at it, it's there. And you can see that it works as it should. Um, also, if I wanted to go to the left, obviously you just change it up and there it is, but you can see that it doesn't look that good when the trophies go over top. All right, let's bring in the rest of it all in one chunk. So we're going to go into the index and we're going to grab screen three and go all the way to the screen four right over there. It's not too much screen three background and screen four background with the closing screen four div copy command C bring it into the actual tutorial so after the background closing div create some space paste it and you will see that it's exactly the same as before you have a div that has screen 3 here we happen to have just like the logo and the Roger Federer image above it all right we happen to have another Roger Federer image over here we only have one parallax element here it was required to have two but the student did have three over here and another one over here. So that does total four. So I'm okay with that. Remember, you can always have more than that. You can have five, six, ten, like whatever you like. Or if you want to do minimum four, that's fine. So this one will actually have the Roger Federer image like this, a logo. And then the screen four simply has no parallax, but it has a div. And instead of just having a div with an image like all of these guys before it, all right, it simply has an image and a paragraph text for the copyright, which you can update if you like. Okay, so if you want more, if you want parallax stuff in here, you can absolutely add it. If not, please add your own social icons, not mine, your own copyright blurb, and position it as you want. All right, so that's the actual HTML. We know we can go to the CSS, and same thing. Let's go grab it in one chunk. So screen three, right over here all the way down to the screen four paragraph, copy, copy, go into the style sheet right over here. If you like, you can add screen three styles. That's my daughter in the background if you hear. Okay, so here we are. We have a background for screen three. We have a background for screen four. Okay, we have float left for the player let me show you what it looks like over here all right so float left player that's this guy right over here in the html 
That's him right there. Then we have a div where we have the actual logo. Okay, there's the logo. There's the logo. Positioning it down 300 and from the left 300. There it is, 300, 300. And you can see it's parallax is it's going really quick. And then the last one we have background for the footer. There it is. We have an image for the actual social icons positioned down 500 pixels and left right auto to center it in the middle. So down 500, auto on either side. And then text align center, color white, font family Arial for the P tag, which is this guy. So text align center, white, Arial, done. All right, and if we take a look again over here, it's finished, but now I want to tell you exactly why the parallax is working. And that all involves the script that I've already had for you at the very bottom here. So let me explain what's going on. So first off, we want to talk about the actual navigation. So it's using something called local scroll script over here. And all you have to do is whatever your nav is, doesn't matter if it's vertical, horizontal position, top, left, right, whatever. Okay, you just have to enter in your actual ID right over here. If it was a class, it worked just the same. So whatever you have on your actual navigation, you put it in to here, and then the script takes care of the rest. So this is the speed with which you'll, you're gonna scroll up and down. You can play around with that if you like, and that simply makes it work like this. Okay, so that's the nav. Now the next one is unrelated to that, Okay, it is the dot parallax script, and it's the one we're using. Remember, you can use a completely different one, but this one only works with background images in CSS. There are other scripts out there. There are other scripts out there that actually can manipulate IMG elements in HTML in addition to background elements in CSS. But this script that we're using only works with background. That's why. All of these guys are the only ones available for parallax. The backgrounds of every section. All right, so this one, this one, the three trophies. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the background here, eight. Okay, so what happens is indeed we have screen one background. And it says we have control over the X position and the speed factor. So X position is left to right, horizontal, right? The horizontal position. And think of it as like margin left. And then the inertia is the speed. Point one's the smallest, the slowest story. Uh, oh my gosh, the slowest. And then two is the quickest. Okay, so 50% just basically positions each of the backgrounds in the middle and has a bit of a speed. And what this does for the background is you can see that the other background eats in to your previous background. See his foot's right over there and then the other background comes up and starts going all the way up the torso. That's a parallax effect obviously, right? And it happens for a lot of the sections on the second, but it happens for the next one as it reveals itself over here. All right, so that's the parallax effect. Now, in terms of the trophies, same thing over here, all right? So Wimbledon, US, and French Open. Well, we have the initial position horizontally and the speed. So this can be a percentage, a pixel, um, a rem, EM, whatever measurement you like. And remember, it's horizontal. So this is 10% of that thousand that it was set to over here. So remember the trophies were set to a width of a thousand. It could have been 2,000, it could have been 500, it could have been a percentage, it could have been anything you wanted over here. But because it's 1,000, this is 10% of that 1,000. All right, this is 50% in the middle, and this is about 80% of that 1,000. So it's taking up those positions. Now, if I manipulate that and I make this 80% too, all right, that first trophy, it's going to go all the way over to the end. All right, just like the other one. And I could have done pixel value instead. I could go like 200 pixels in there. And then it's gonna push it. It's like margin left, 200 pixels. 
all right, 400 pixels, etc. Okay, so that's what that value is for. And then we have the speed. So because this is twice as fast or as this one, all right, which is faster than this one, you notice the French Open is going to kind of catch up to the other ones because it starts at the bottom and then it kind of moves up and catches, starts catching up to the others because that's the speed it's on. Okay, and same thing for the logo over here. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, so we have 90% over. That's why the logo is 90% of 1,000. And it moves at 2. So it's moving really quickly. And that's why it catches up to Roger Federer's face over there because it's moving that fast. Okay, and then we have some social icons and things like that. All right, I don't think this one's relevant, though. I'm going to take that out because, again, there is no social icon parallax. So I hope you know how to work this now. Sorry about the slight interruption. It is hard to kind of find a quiet spot when both my wife and I are working, but that should help you guys out. Pleasure teaching you guys. Honestly, it's sad we can't see each other in person, but I wish you nothing but the best and hope to see you at grad. Uh, I know it's a little bit of ways away, but again, have a great spring, summer, and all the best.